Hello, Hans. Good evening. Hello. How are you doing? Yes, well, great, Maureen. Thank, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our, our series of webinars, uh, Hans, and thank you for coming here to talk about vulture conservation. It's a very important topic that you're bringing to our uh, friends and our audience and your audience. Um, it's it's uh, super important to showcase the cause of um, you know vultures and their decline and how you sort of doing things in Europe. I am really happy that you're here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Mahesh. Welcome, Paddy. Welcome, Bettina, Salil, Gaurav, Judith. Um, well, okay. So, so uh, Judy Brulo is from the UK, and Gaurav and Salil. So there are lots of friends who are joining in. Friends, welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Meet Hans Hans Polman. He's from VCF. Vulture Conservation Foundation from the Netherlands, and he will be taking us through the journey of uh, you know the kind of work that they're doing. Uh, thank you for coming here. In a short while, I will be introducing him to you and myself as well for the people who don't know me enough. And uh, I hope I'm audible and I'm clear. If I am, can you just type yes in the chat? So I know that you can hear me properly. Hans, uh, can you hear me properly? Yes, perfectly. Excellent, excellent. And I'd really like to thank um, Mark Hout from Agami to, uh, to put me in touch with you. And Mark is already here. So I'm going to have Mark uh, come in for a minute or two so that he can be a part of us. Mark, I've invited you. You can click the link, uh, you know, and then be here with us. Hello, Brian. Hello, Mahindraji, Vishmadev. Bob, which is new, Bob. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is, friends, I'm going to introduce um, Hans to you while we wait for Mark to come. It's a it's noteworthy introduction that I have about Hans here. So kindly be with me. Hans Polman is the vice uh, is the president of the Vulture Conservation Foundation. He studied spatial planning and worked at three different consultancy firms in the following 18 years. Currently, he's working at Stitching Landschaft of Reisel, a Dutch NGO as Director of Conservation. In this role, he's responsible for managing 64 different nature reserves, out of which eight are classified as Natura 2000 sites. Within this position, relationship management, financial management, and strategic development are the main tasks. He's an avid birder in his free time. Hans's first acquaintance with the BCF was when he returned a weakened bearded vulture back to the Alps in 2015. Since then, he had worked on several projects while representing the BCF. He joined the management board in 2017 and is currently the president of the board. A bit about Vulture Conservation Foundation. VCF is an international NGO committed to the conservation of European vulture species, that is, bearded vultures, griffin vultures, cenarius vultures, and Egyptian vultures. VCF has extensive experience in breeding, reintroduction, and protection of vultures in their natural habitat. The vision is European populations of the four vulture species are self sustaining, healthy with a good conservation status and occupying most of its former range supported by good quality habitats and valued by people. VCF is working for the recovery of the four vulture species in Europe by initiating, facilitating, supporting conservation actions and research, and by working with people and organizations towards the, their vision. So that's commendable. That's really, really heartening to know that Vulture Conservation Foundation is doing great work in Europe. A quick introduction about me. 
I am Mohit Agarwal. I'm blessed with four children, a son and a daughter, and two non-humans. One is a Labrador and one is an SKP African Grey. I'm a follower of Shiva. Professionally, I'm an experiential ecotourism specialist with a deep love for nature. I help people travel to some wonderful places in Asia. I'm on the board of Asian Ecotourism Network, and I've been trained and certified by GSTC in sustainable tourism. I'm the founder of Asian Adventures. We're going to complete 27 years in June. It's the largest bird watching tour company in India. The company has a large mission to help Asian elephants with the corridors, free the Himalayas of plastic waste, help small wildlife NGOs, and also save the ancient Himalayan shrubs. So that's a bit about me, friends. I hope it was clear. And I can't see Mark here, so Mark definitely cannot make it here. I will try once again. Otherwise, um, and you go right ahead and start your presentation, and we'll get Mark in the end. Okay, very good. Um, thanks, uh, Mohit, for the for the introduction, and thanks for your invitation uh, to uh, to be able to, um, to, sh to to give this webinar. Thanks all, also for all the uh, the attendees that are uh, that are present and that, that have taken the time and the uh, the trouble of uh, of being here. Um, I'm going to start my presentation now. Um, um, can you? I, I hope you can actually see it uh, at this uh, at this point. Um, yes, absolutely. Good. It's clear. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'm going to tell something about uh, uh, the, the culture conservation in uh, in Europe, uh, and I hope um, I will uh, be able to, uh, to 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 explain to you all that the conservation of uh, of vultures is a real positive story. So it's a story of hope uh, and a story of yes, we can we can restore vulture populations, and we did it in Europe. Um, and even though situations in, 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 in Asia, uh, in Africa, are pretty hard on, on vultures at this moment, um, I hope with showcasing uh, uh, our work within, uh, within Europe um, that, that there is actually, there is, a, there is hope. Uh, I just told Mohit that, that my, my first ever observation of a vulture was in India. Uh, it was on the Amber Ford in, uh, in, in Jaipur uh, in 1995. Um, there was a white brown vulture there. Um, so I was lucky to actually see vultures in uh, in Asia, which is um, getting more and more difficult at this point. So 40 years ago, um, Asia was the the, the continent of, uh, of, of vultures. Uh, there were vultures in every city, all around. They were everywhere. There were literally 40 million uh, birds across uh, uh, across the, co uh, the the continent. They were actually everywhere. But since then, there has been a huge decline uh, in, in, in vulture populations. The, the, the population have dropped over 99%, uh, mostly based on, um, uh, caused by, uh, by the use of uh, a veterinary diclofenac, a veterinary drug which is highly poisonous to, uh, to vultures, with you, which led to huge declines. So 40 years ago, Asia was definitely the continent of, uh, uh, of vultures. Since then, if you asked me 20 years ago, um, the answer would be that Africa was the, the continent of vultures. Uh, pictures like this would be um, quite easy to see uh, near road kills um, as, as scavengers, of road kills, kills of lions, uh, I had to say. Had to say. Um, lots of scavengers around uh, uh, the carcasses that were left uh, uh, behind um, so it was quite easy to uh, to take a picture like uh, uh, like this but also in africa uh, things are going uh, really fast downhill um, there are lots of uh, poisoning incident incidents like the picture over here on uh, on this this uh, this picture um, where, where also poisoning is a big, uh, big problem. Uh, for instance, when um, uh, when poachers shoot an elephant, they poison the carcass immediately in order to kill the uh, the vultures, because the the cloud of vultures hanging above is an excellent sentinel for uh, the game wardens to to, um, to 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 try and to guard the the elephants and, and go into the the act of poaching. So therefore, the sentinels are all killed, 
uh, which lead, lead to, to pictures like this and a huge decline of vulture population in, uh, in Africa. So 20 years ago, uh, uh, Africa was the, the continent of, um, uh, of vultures. Uh, let's see if I press the right button. Yes. Um, and out of the 11 species that are uh, uh, currently uh, still available, uh, still there in, uh, in, in Africa, uh, seven species are either critical, critically endangered or endangered and are on the brink of extinction. Uh, only uh, bearded vultures and smerious vultures do a bit better and ponded vultures and driven vultures are of least concern, but the seven species of critically endangered and endangered uh, status are, are, are actually on the verge of, uh, of, of extinction. Um, today, um, I would say that Europe is the, uh, the continent of, of vultures. Your best chance to see vultures is actually here in Europe. Uh, this is a picture in, um, I think, in Spain. Um, but it's quite easy to see, to take a picture like this in, in Spain, in Portugal, in France even. Um, so populations are, are doing really well uh, uh, there. We have four different species, or, or five, but I will go into that, four different species of, uh, of, of vultures um, going from, from left to right. We have uh, the griffin vulture, uh, the most abundant uh, species of vulture across uh, Europe. Then we have the, the scenarius vulture or um, European black vulture, um, increasing status um, and the huge bird. Uh, my personal favorite is, uh, is the bearded vulture, the one in the middle. Um, coming back from uh, the brink of extinction. Um, for all species, I will go into their status uh, in a short while. And the last species uh, here is the, uh, is the Egyptian vulture. Um, and this is the only migratory species uh, that we have here in uh, Europe. The other species are all sedentary and will remain uh, in their, um, uh, their breeding or living grounds uh, um, year round. Um, the fifth species that we have is, uh, is Ruppels, Ruppels vulture. Um, this is actually an African species, but uh, it's in, uh, increasingly turning up in Europe. It's, um, um, there, there's still a lot of, no, uh, of unknown on this uh, species. Uh, we think it's, uh, it, it migrates with, uh, uh, with the griffins from Africa to, to Europe using the Strait of Gibraltar as a, as a crossing point. And every year, um, uh, a higher number of uh, uh, migrating uh, ruples is, uh, is counted. There is no confirmed breeding record yet, um, but the expectation is that there will be in uh, within the next couple of years. So uh, then that, at that point, we actually have five species. So we have to, um, to change our logo. There are currently four uh, vultures there, but we have to, to add our, uh, our fifth. Um, when looking at uh, uh, distribution of, uh, of vultures in, in Europe, mostly uh, the, the species are, is um, uh, connected with mountainous ranges, so uh, the Alps and the southern areas, such as Spain, France, Portugal. Um, there are also vultures present in the Balkans, uh, Bulgaria, Greece, uh, Turkey is uh, is a big uh, big part. Um, those are the, the the areas where the where the vultures are resident year round, and um, from those areas there are dispersing birds every year. So I will be uh, waiting for them in the, in the Netherlands for uh, I think about six weeks, mostly the first week of June. Uh, a large groups of griffin turns up uh, in uh, when when there are subtle, suddenly winds. Um, but they will only be present for a couple of days and then re re uh, return to, um, uh, to their breeding uh, uh, grounds. So the first message I would like to uh, share with you is the fact that uh, Europe is currently uh, the, the vulture continent of, uh, of the world uh, and that we have actually a thriving population of, of different uh, species and that we do have uh, some good best practices to share on, on vulture conservation. So, uh, as I said in, 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 in the start, 
Vultures in Europe is a very positive story, and I hope to be able to uh, to share that with you uh, today. So, um, even though there's a lot of hopelessness, uh, doom and gloom uh, on, on in the conservation world, which is um, um, true for a whole lot of species, unfortunately, all across across the world. For vultures, uh, and I hope this 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 also shines a light on uh, on other species. There actually is uh, is still hope. Um, then going into the different species that we have in uh, in, in Europe, um, this is actually the the my personal favorite and actually one of our flagship flagship species of the of the Vulture Conservation Foundation. This is the bearded vulture. Um, this is a bird that um, is present uh, in, uh, in, 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 well, all across the world. It's also in, in, in India and in, and in Asia. There is a different subspecies in, in, in the southern tip of Africa, the Meridionalis uh, subspecies. Um, the one that we have is the, is the Barbatus uh, subspecies. And when you see in the map in Europe uh, and in North Africa, uh, there's a lot of red. Uh, that means that the birds were present at that, at some point there, but are is currently extinct from uh, uh, from that point. Um, the past is that the bearded vulture extinct in big parts of Europe uh, around the early 1900s. Um, the the uh, another name for for bearded vulture is Lammergeier, uh, and it's it got its name because it's was accused of um, throwing uh, young lambs of the sheep uh, off the cliffs, cliffs in order to uh, uh, to take it as a prey, and of course uh, this is this is definitely not true, uh, as all vultures are scavengers, so is the bearded vulture. Uh, but nevertheless, um, people actually got bonuses. There were prizes. Uh, on uh, on the heads of the and, and the corpses of, uh, of bearded vultures, the pictures that uh, that you have here, the man with the beard, uh, is taken in around 1913 in Italy. Um, it is the the last picture that that the picture of the last bearded vulture in in the Alps. Um, so. Uh, at some point, and this is around 1980, 1970, 1980, uh, populations were at a very critical state. There was a small a relic population in the Pyrenees. There was a very small uh, island population, uh, isolated population on Corsica. Um, and you had to go pretty far east in order to, uh, uh, to see some uh, um, uh, stable populations going as far as in, in, into Turkey. Um, the island of Crete still has a, a couple of pairs, and, and in 1980 there was still a population in, uh, on, in, in northern Greece. And that population has unfortunately extinct, uh, extinct by now. Um, but as you can see, there were still um, some populations left, but at a very low level and uh, with a very high risk of, uh, of, of definitely uh, getting extinct, not more than around 70 uh, breeding pairs. But fortunately, in the, um, at the end of the, of, of the 70s, early 80s, um, there was a group of visionaries, a, a group of dreamers um, that started thinking on the idea of reintroducing uh, bearded vultures to, uh, to the Alps. Um, and actually, this was one of the predecessors of, uh, uh, of the VCF. Um, and they thought, it, how great would it be if we were able to return the bearded vulture uh, to the Alps? So what did they do? They actually um, uh, started buying uh, bearded vultures from from the zoo in order to get a captive breeding program started. And the idea was that um, it was not possible to um, uh, to select uh, eggs or young birds from uh, from wild nests, uh, 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 as it would help uh, the extinction getting closer uh, every every moment. Um, so birds were were taken from zoos. Uh, um, the eggs that they laid, led um, 
were uh, taken into a captive breeding uh, a program. And in this way, um, um, a captive breeding stock was, was arranged with the idea of their young ever to be released within the, uh, within the Alpine range. Um, and that started at first in, uh, in 1986, where we started releasing, um, or where they started releasing, the VCF was not there yet, uh, young bearded vultures into, uh, into the Alps. Um, this picture shows the release of a bird. This is not the way how we release uh, bearded vultures, uh, by the way. Um, I will go into that uh, uh, in a minute, but this, this, this is a very strong picture of uh, the release of a bird uh, in an area where uh, where these birds are uh, are present. So what we do if uh, a young bearded vulture is um, around 90 days old, a bit uh, so around three months, um, we take them up high up up on a cliff uh, in a selected area uh, where we um, uh, where we release the birds in a hacking cage. That means that when we release the birds, um, they will be fed there um, without any human contact. And in the in the in, in the captivity program before they are released, they don't have any human contact as well. So there is absolutely no human imprinting whatsoever. When we release them uh, in a in a cave in a hacking site, um, the birds remain there for a couple of weeks before they fledge. And um, due to the to the knowledge that we have gained in the last uh, decades of uh, of captive breeding and the releases of bearded vultures in in, in different areas, uh, we have learned that in the last days before fledging, and actually in the first period uh, from fledging on, um, the bearded vultures get used to the area where they fledge, uh, and um, they are highly phylopatric, uh, which means that. Uh, when they uh, get old enough to breed, that is from early oast on seven years old, but mainly around a year, about 10 years, they will return to the area where they, uh, where they fledge. So that makes, makes it possible for, uh, for us to release birds uh, on a specific site to actually start a new breeding uh, core there. Um, this takes 10 years because it takes 10 years for the birds to mature and to, uh, to get to breeding age. Um, but this is a, a very successful uh, uh, procedure. When the birds are released, um, they are observed during the entire time. Uh, so um, uh, our local partners, uh, like for instance, the, the Stiftung Pro Bartgeier, which is the, the, the Swiss organization for the conservation of bearded vultures, um, their staff, their volunteers are will be watching the the, the hacking cave and the the the, the 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 chicks for for as long as it takes. Um, after the release, they will feed the birds in the dark so that they will don't don't have any uh, any human contact. Um, and after the birds fledge, they remain uh, being observed for about three months. Uh, and then the, the, the young birds, the, the, the fledglings, will disperse further. And then our monitoring stops, uh, stops as well. So this is a lot of work, uh, but very, um, uh, very rewarding. Um, as Mohit uh, told in the, uh, in the beginning, um, my first acquaintance with the VCF was when uh, was in in 2015 uh, when I returned uh, a weakened bearded vulture back to the Alps. This is actually the bird uh, which is on the picture. It's called Shields. Um, it flew from the Alps uh, towards the Netherlands, got caught in a in a thunderstorm, and 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 was found weakened in a chicken coop near a chicken coop. Uh, it was taken into rehabilitation, and after two weeks, he got strong enough to uh, to be able to uh, to return to the Alps. So we drove it to the Alps in the back of our car, and it would, was released uh, uh, then. So this was in nine, in 2015, when it was a third calendar bird. 
Uh, and this year we had the excellent news that um, it actually did its first breeding attempt uh, uh, this year. So even though birds disperse to, uh, to far and wide every now and then, um, they usually return to the Alps by themselves, or to the mountains by, uh, by themselves. But even with a little help, they, uh, they will be able to, um, um, to start breeding again. Um, um, as I said, we, we run the, um, the Euro European uh, Endangered Species Program on, on Bearded Vulture, the EEP, um, uh, which means that we run uh, also do the management of some uh, specialized breeding uh, centers where we breed uh, bearded vultures uh, in order to, um, uh, to create uh, to create to have uh, young birds to uh, to release back in uh, into the wild. We have lar three large uh, large breeding centers: one in Austria, and two in Spain. Um, and we, there are two smaller breeding centers um, in France and in, in and in Switzerland, and there are about forty zoos that actually have uh, pairs of breeding of bearded vultures and and, and help on, uh, on on the breeding program. Um, uh, I don't have the, 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 the numbers for last year and, and even this year, um, but you can see that um, uh, we raised almost 600 juveniles uh, in the last uh, decades. Um, and especially in the first years uh, of the, 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 the breeding program, uh, this was tough as we didn't have any knowledge uh, on, on the species and how it would work in, in, in captive breeding. The numbers were low um, and there it takes 10 years before young birds start breeding on their own. Um, but so far, uh, almost 600 uh, uh, juveniles uh, uh, were, uh, were raised. And a lot of those were, um, were used to, to actually release in specific uh, 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 sites. Mainly in the Alps, uh, over 200 birds have been released in the Alps, um, and also we have we started releases in um, um, in, in Andalusia in Spain in order to uh, to create a connection between the Pyrenees and, and northern Africa. Uh, so it, you can see this as a sort of stepping stone. Um, as I told, bearding bearded vultures are high low phylopratic. Uh, that means that they will uh, mostly start breeding within 50 kilometers of their uh, their breeding grounds, but with the hacking method, we are able to uh, to, to recreate uh, in Andalusia uh, a stepping stone from the Pyrenees into the to North Africa. Um, and several pairs have started uh, started breeding there in the in the pre previous years, also resulting in a, in, a, in a quite a good number of, uh, of fledglings. The same we have done for uh, for the Grand Cause, the Massif Central in uh, in France, to um, to create a connection between the Pyrenees and and the Alps. Um, uh, this is a younger project, uh, so no um, breeding pairs there yet, but the number of birds that is present year round in the uh, in the area is uh, is growing uh, growing a lot. Um, we have started uh, a project in Sardinia, uh, which was unsuccessful due to the high uh, uh, mortality of, uh, of poisoning. Um, so we, uh, and, and, and poisoning is still a problem. So we, we stopped uh, the releases in, in, in Sardinia. What we did do is start a pro project in the Maestrasgo. This is also in Spain uh, in order to, uh, to make a stepping stone between the Pyrenees and, and, and Andalusia. And the remaining population in Corsica is under a lot of pressure. Um, so we released a, uh, a, a number of, um, of juveniles in, in, in Corsica in order to, uh, to restock the population and to save, to save uh, uh, most of all the, the, the genetic profile of the original Corsican, uh, Corsican birds. Uh, wrong button. Uh, well, and as you can see, um, uh, these are the uh, the numbers from from the Alps. Um, the graphs are going up pretty hard. Um, it, it takes ten years. First releases were in 1986, and we had our first breeding uh, success in in 1997. 
where uh, the first chick, uh, chick ever since about 100 years was born in, uh, um, in the Alps. And since then, numbers have gone up and uh, the numbers of nesting pairs, but also the number of, uh, of fledging. This leads to the fact that we now have uh, um, a stable population, a, grow, a rapidly growing and uh, self-sustaining uh, population of bearded vultures uh, in the Alps. So it takes about 40 years uh, to, uh, to restore the, the population, uh, but the, the, um, uh, the, the species, the bearded vulture, is, 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 go, is doing well in, in the Alps and is, uh, is spreading out. Um, as you can see, uh, this is the, the distribution of bearded folder breeding units uh, around the last year. Um, there are several breeding clusters uh, in the Alps. Uh, those are um, sort of around the, uh, the, the release sites. The red dots are the, are the release sites uh, due to the philopatric behavior, um, but still you, we see some gaps and we don't know exactly why there are gaps and the main issue is that uh, the releases in, in, in Austria, so the, the, the eastern part of the Alps, have not led yet to, um, uh, to a growth of breeding population in, in Austria. Um, and this is a vital uh, uh, location as this is the link between the, the, the Alps and, and the Balkans, which will be the focus for release of bearded, bearded vultures in the, in, the, in the coming years. Um, so releases in Austria are uh, unfortunately not as successful as uh, as they are in Switzerland or Italy or uh, or, or France. As I said, the, the population in uh, in the Alps is um, uh, is self sustaining, um, which also shows in this uh, this graph. The the the, the red bars are uh, the number of released birds every year in the Alps, which is stable uh, and, uh, and, and decreasing uh, every year as, the, as there is no need to, uh, uh, from a demographic point of view, to release any more birds. But the, the number of wild hatched birds uh, in the Alps is, uh, is, is far greater than the, the number of, uh, of released birds um, leading to, uh, uh, to a huge uh, uh, increase in the, in the graph as uh, uh, shown. I think what one of the the, the, the successes uh, success factors of uh, of the project is that um, uh, that that there's a huge positive PR on this uh, this project. This is what what, what they call in, in France a project fédérateur, a project that we do with the entire uh, uh, village. There's a lot of positive PR uh, from uh, from farmers, from hunters, from ecotourism, from uh, the, the, the villagers and every release that we do um, gathers a huge crowd um, for instance like this um, this looks um, troubling for the birds it, it, it is a bit stress uh, increasing but this is only a short moment but when we release the young birds to a public like this um, the enthusiasm uh, of the problem public increases enormously and there is huge support for the releases and for the conservation of, uh, uh, of this bird. So every year the releases um, uh, gather a, a whole lot of, uh, uh, of people and um, um, the, the, the good news of the, of the releases and uh, the return of the bearded vulture is shared by, uh, by a whole lot of, uh, of people. Um, what I really would like to uh, uh, to be uh, be sure of is that uh, we don't do this by ourselves. Uh, we are only one small partner in a huge network of organizations that uh, that work on the conservation of, uh, of of bearded vultures. As you can see, we have uh, partners from uh, from all around uh, uh, Europe, mostly local partners. Um, that really are vital to the to the conservation, uh, the monitoring, uh, the safeguarding of the birds, and, uh, uh, and, and and without them, we would not be able to uh, uh, to do our uh, our work. Um, one small side step, as I said before, every now and then uh, bearded vultures uh, move out of the out of the mountains. Um, 
and go through uh, through great uh, uh, great travels all across uh, across Europe. This is part of their natural behavior. Um, they disperse uh, as youngsters in their second or third calendar year from uh, from the breeding grounds, um, but return afterwards to uh, by the, to the Alps by uh, by themselves. I think one of the greatest travelers that, that we know of was uh, a, a bird that we released with the name of Adonis, um, which traveled all around Europe. We know because the bird was uh, attacked with a GPS uh, uh, locator. Uh, so we were able to follow the bird and to be uh, uh, in, in, in contact with, uh, with people on the ground if, if, if we uh, needed someone to, uh, to check on the, on the bird. Um, so, um, I, I'm based in the Netherlands. I've seen now, uh, I think, four bearded vultures uh, in the Netherlands. Um, three of them were, uh, were GPS tagged and they all returned to uh, all but one, uh, returned to, the, to their, their Alps uh, by themselves. The one that didn't return was killed in, in, in northern Germany with a collision of a power line. Um, I'm going to skip that. As I said before, um, we are creating stepping stones between the different subpopulations of, uh, of the bearded vultures um, in order to connect the, the different populations uh, uh, with each other. That means that um, with the current populations of, uh, of, of bearded vultures, um, uh, we are building bridges between the Pyrenees and the Alps the Alps to the Balkans uh, and from the Pyrenees to, to North Africa. Um, we can see in the genetic profiles of, uh, of museum specimens that there used to be a, a, a gene flow between the several populations. Uh, we can see specific markers, genetic markers in, in, in those individuals um, shot or collected or found in the Alps which actually have genetic markers coming from the Pyrenees, from North Africa or for, from the Balkans. Uh, so in order to, to restore that, we are, we are restoring these, uh, these connections, as I, uh, as I mentioned before. Message number two that I would like to, to, to come across is that bearded, bearded uh, vulture reintroduction, I think, is one of the most successful wildlife comeback stories of, uh, of our times. Highly successful, not only because of the uh, the number of, uh, of birds that were released and the populations that are growing in the wild, but also because the, the, the comeback of this species has really captured the imagination of people. And it really helps uh, as a flagship, flagship species, the conservation of, um, of bigger areas, not only on vultures, but also on other scavengers like, like kites or, or predators like, like bear and wolf. Uh, for instance, um, it takes a long time, 30 to 40 years, um, but the results are, uh, are actually uh, uh, very good. Skipping to another species, um, griffin vulture. Um, also the same, the same story in the 80s, there were, uh, the numbers were at their, at their lowest. At that point, there were on around 5,000 pairs all across uh, Europe mainly in Spain, uh, some in the Balkans, uh, North Africa. Uh, but in the last 20 years, the, the population of griffin vultures has, uh, has grown with over 200%. Um, as you can see, uh, this, for instance, in Spain, um, there are now over 30,000 pairs of griffin vultures in, in, in Spain, spread all, all across the country and acting as a huge sourcing population, for instance, for the, for the recovery of uh, uh, other areas like Portugal, like, like Spain. Um, and also in those areas, the numbers are, uh, are getting, uh, getting bigger. Um, in, I'm not exactly the, the uh, don't know exactly the year, I think it was 1980, 1982. Uh, release of griffins started in France. Um, this was uh, in the Central Massif uh, uh, as well. Um, and since then, the population there has, uh, uh, has skyrocketed. 
uh, as you can see in the next graph. So I think this, yes, this is 1982 uh, when the release started. Um, from zero to 2,000 uh, pairs in 20 to 30 years. Uh, if the conditions are right, uh, meaning that um, the natural conditions, of course, has to have to be there, breeding cliffs, um, a good number of uh, um, of wild animals that uh, that are used as a, a carry on, uh, so uh, red deer, ibex, uh, chamois, for instance, um, and and a, a tackling of um, uh, of threats, electrocution, uh, collision, mainly poisoning was a big uh, big issue. If we are able to 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 tackle those issue, uh, the recovery uh, of uh, um, of griffins proved to be uh, highly uh, highly possible. Um, so griffins is now doing really well in uh, across Europe, uh, not on all locations. Um, for for instance, the island of uh, of Sardinia. Uh, I said before that we started a release project for bearded vultures in Sardinia. Which failed due to uh, a high level of uh, of poisoning that 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 is still uh, still there. Um, we worked with again with local partners on uh, the recovery of griffin vultures in Sardinia, um, which uh, is mainly focused on taking away threats, poisoning, collision, uh, etc., and and reintroducing uh, enough food for them, wild ungulates, for instance. Um, and when the population of griffins in, in, in Sardinia uh, is, is rising and the number of uh, 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 poisoning incidents, for instance, is, is going down, then releases for, for instance, bearded vulture in the, in, in the future will, uh, uh, will come as well. Uh, and again, here is also a project that we, that we would like to do with um, uh, with the locals uh, sharing positive news as well. Um, the griffins that we are releasing here are coming from uh, rehabilitation centers, for instance, in Spain, uh, but also from captive breeding uh, sites in, uh, in, for instance, uh, zoos. Um, there are a couple of birds coming from from Arctic Zoo, from uh, from Amsterdam in uh, in the Netherlands that uh, that are actually now roaming the skies of uh, of Sardinia, and this also is a project that is very successful, and the number of uh, of griffins is uh, is, is rising here uh, as well. Cenerius vulture, um, uh, European black uh, black vulture, um, again. Um, in the last decade before 2010, so around 2000, there was a 50%. There, there was a lot of, uh, of birds uh, um, going down. Uh, there was a quite low number of, of breeding pairs, mainly focused in, uh, in Spain. Um, so again, what we did, um, we started um, uh, tackling the, 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 the issues poisoning, uh, uh, disturbance from their breeding grounds, uh, collision uh, uh, threats, and we started releasing the birds on, on, in different uh, uh, locations. Um, what you see is that um, in the 1980s, there were around 250 pairs left in, uh, in Spain. Um, and within a period of around 30, 40 years, we were able to get the population to over 3,000 pairs. Um, and, and with we, I don't mean the, the VCF uh, uh, all alone, all by myself, but a combined effort with, uh, with the local uh, and Spanish authorities, local NGOs, which did an excellent job on the, on the, on the ground. Um, also here, we released young birds, uh, this is a, um, a, a young uh, scenarius vulture on, a, on an artificial nest on the, in the Dauru. Uh, this is on the, the border river between Spain and, and, and Portugal. Um, we released this bird here as well using the hacking method. You can see the GPS locator on its back, uh, which allows us to, uh, um, to follow the, 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 the dispersed bird across the, the country and across, uh, across Europe. Um, 
Also here, you can see uh, the dispersion of, uh, of these birds uh, in, in, in Spain. But mainly I would like to see, to show this, the, the estimated number of breeding pairs in, in Europe, it's going up uh, immensely. Uh, there's a, a huge uh, uh, increase in, in numbers for uh, less than 500 pairs in, uh, 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 for instance, in France in, uh, uh, in 1995. Uh, going up to uh, to over uh, 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 well, a lot. You can see the you can see the numbers. Huge number uh, uh, rise in uh, in numbers. Uh, these are the release sites of uh, of the young scenarios vultures that we did in uh, in, in France. Um, we did uh, the release of about a uh, hundred and forty uh, young birds uh, in, uh, in 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 different areas. Um, which is is leading to, uh, to to new populations, new breeding uh, colonies of uh, of this species in uh, um, uh, in in Europe, and we are currently working on a release of scenarios vultures in the Balkans. Uh, there was one remaining popu population breeding population uh, in northern Greece in Dadia Forest on the on the border with uh, with Bulgaria. Um, and we have now started to release uh, scenarios vultures there in order to create an, an, a new breeding colony um, to, to strengthen the, uh, the population there. What we do there is um, we take birds from rehabilitation uh, centers, mainly from, uh, from Spain, from Portugal, and we translocate them to uh, to Bulgaria uh, and have them in av aviaries for uh, uh, for uh, uh, a certain amount of time, in order to to uh, to habituate them to uh, to specific sites where they uh, uh, where they return. Um, we will give them food. We will give them shelter in the first uh, period, and they will return to these sites um, uh, for the rest of their lives. What we also do is um, release of, um, of, of captive bred, bred birds in artificial nests um, in areas like, uh, like this. Um, um, these are birds that were um, hatched in, in, in zoos mainly, uh, were taken, uh, were, were, were raised there by, by their uh, natural parents, so without human, uh, human interference. Um, but just before fledging, they are being transported to, to, to sites like this in order to, um, to have them, uh, uh, to, to release them in sites like this. And with uh, the same with, uh, with the bearded vultures, when they, um, when they leave the nest, when they fledge, they actually come back to, uh, to the area where, uh, where they fledge. Last species, uh, this is the only species that is still in trouble in, uh, in, in Europe. This is the Egyptian vulture. Um, this is the only one that has a, 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 an endangered uh, status within the IUCN. Um, this is the only migratory species that we have, uh, except for the ripples, of course, as I mentioned before. But this, this bird um, mostly migrates to Africa and back every, uh, every year and, uh, and then. There's a small population that remains in, um, uh, in Europe uh, throughout the year, mainly in, in, in Spain and in France, but most of them still go to, um, uh, to Africa. And what you see is that uh, mainly in, in there are, uh, the populations are going down, the red dots, some are remaining equal, uh, some are going up, but uh, in general, the population is, uh, uh, is, is going down. Um, this is a specific project for the project Greer. This is the local name of uh, uh, these birds in uh, in some Spanish islands. Um, they were monitored uh, quite a lot, and there were serious um, conservation actions going on in order to make sure to take away their uh, their main threats. So, in the graph before, you can see that um, the um, the causes of death. Uh, in the two graphs are really different in 1998 between 2006 than in the period afterwards, and some threats were actually taken away. For instance, the collision with uh, with power lines. Um, this was is very 
valuable information for us also to uh, be able to uh, uh, to guard the species and to 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 focus conservation of this species in in, in mainland uh, Europe as well. So we are currently running several projects on uh, on Egyptian vultures. Uh, for instance, uh, the project that we do in uh, uh, again the Douro Valley in uh, in Portugal, the the border river between Portugal and and, and Spain. Um, this project is really focused on on research. Um, where do the birds go uh, from their breeding sites, from their forage, foraging areas, but also on their uh, their migratory path to uh, to Africa? Um, which shows graphs like uh, like this. Uh, this is a lot of uh, um, a GPS tags, Egyptian vultures showing their migratory path from their breeding grounds into their, their wintering grounds, uh, which allows us to, um, to select the, the, the most important um, uh, locations or sites uh, where they migrate from, um, which gives us, the, again, of course, the opportunity to, to focus our conservation efforts on, on, on sites like, uh, like this. This is a study from uh, from Portuguese and, and Spanish birds. We have done this uh, also uh, from birds from uh, from the Balkans. Uh, so we have a huge data set of uh, um, of GPS tracks uh, from birds going back and forth to uh, to Africa every uh, every year. Um, and this information, of course, we use to. Uh, uh, to 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 focus our conservation actions in the in the very specific uh, areas that are vital to this uh, to these birds. Also on, on uh, Egyptian vultures, we do uh, uh, captive breeding. Um, we have um, a, a couple of birds. I think we have eight uh, that, that that are owned. We uh, it's, it's difficult to to say owned by by the VCF, but but legally they they are officially owned by us. Um, that we use for uh, for captive breeding. Um, there is a big center in Italy, uh, the Centro Rapaci Minacciati in in Italy, that that, that is um, breeding Egyptian uh, Egyptian vultures. And with this captive breeding, we um, uh, we try to uh, to release as many of them uh, in order to uh, to to safeguard and to restock certain uh, certain populations. Um, again, we do that with uh, specific methods. Um, uh, with, we have, uh, in the last couple of years, uh, did a lot of research on which method is most fitting and most successful. Um, we're still in that process, but the, 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 the method of, uh, of delayed release uh, seems to be the most uh, uh, efficient one. And as you can see, uh, we, we we monitor these birds birds with uh, with GPS tags uh, uh, on them. Um, let's see. I'm going to skip that. I already told that. Um, we also have, um, uh, based on the GPS tags, we have a mortality database. So, um, which birds were killed? Um, why were they killed? Uh, what is there something that we can 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 do uh, uh, to them uh, to 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 keep that from happening? Um, one of the main issues is actually drowning. Um, when the birds cross the Mediterranean Sea, um, uh, quite a lot of birds have drowned. They haven't made it to uh, uh, to mainland Africa. Some did, as this bird did, as uh, as shown now. Um, this is a path over open sea over 600 kilometers, which, which took the bird nine and a half hours to uh, uh, to pass. You can imagine that uh, this bird has to be lucky in, uh, to uh, uh, to make it. And, and, and uh, headwinds, uh, rain, uh, some other meteorological uh, problem um, would make it impossible for the for the birds to uh, to reach Africa and actually drown in the in the in the Mediterranean. Um, so message three: uh, Riven vultures and Cinereus vultures population are recovering with a with an immense uh, uh, pace and, and 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 huge numbers. 
which is absolutely great and, uh, and, and um, makes the possibility to see Griffin and Sidereus vultures all across, uh, across Europe again. Egyptians is still a bit difficult. Um, in some areas, it's, it's stable or, or slightly increasing. That would be probably uh, uh, Spain, but um, in the Balkans, it's still, it's still difficult. And I think that, um, in general, will be uh, the next frontier for uh, vulture uh, conservation, the Balkans. Um, the populations of others of the species are doing so well all across main mainland Europe that we are now uh, moving our focus to the edges of mainland Europe. Balkans, North Africa, uh, as they are now the, the, the main uh, threats. Um, one uh, small... Uh, information on, 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 on what kills vultures. Um, this is still the, 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 the main issue. This is the, the illegal poisoning of, uh, of vultures. Um, most poison is placed to, um, to kill uh, predators like wolves, like bears, foxes, uh, species like that, and that are uh, every now and then uh, take uh, um, livestock from farmers, sheep, for instance. And um, some farmers still think that poisoning is the issue of the, 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 the way to solve uh, the issue. Unfortunately, a lot of vultures also get killed by, uh, uh, by this poison. <coughs> now, some, uh, some instances. So th this is something that we are working on really, uh, really hard. We have uh, currently uh, are running the uh, Balkan anti-poisoning project, uh, where all the countries in the in, in the in the Balkans are um, building capacity, and we're working on with governments on, on wildlife crime to to start to to minimize this uh, this poisoning uh, threats. Poisoning is not the only issue. Um, electrocution is a is a big big problem, um, mainly the. Uh, the, the electricity, the, the transport, the power lines are uh, not all of them are, are insulated uh, properly. Uh, so when birds land on that, they still get electrocuted uh, uh, every now and then. And also um, collisions with power lines also uh, still happen. So, so uh, poisoning, electrocution and um, uh, collision with power lines are, are at this point the, the most um, uh, the, the main reasons for uh, for death of uh, of these vultures. Final slide, uh, slide uh, conclusions. Um, I think uh, when starting in Europe in, in Asia forty years ago, then going to Africa, uh, Europe is now the the continent of uh, of vultures. Um, we have come a very long way with populations dramatically low, um, but we have in the last four decades uh, have been able to uh, to recover the populations. We have the know-how, we, ha know we have the expertise. Uh, still a lot of work has to be done. For instance, the Balkans, North Africa, um, it takes really uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, approach, um, but it is possible. Yes, we can, we can save vultures. Um, we have to do have to keep mitigating the threats. Um, so um, even though the numbers are big, we have to keep working on them, especially the poisoning. Um, but it is possible, even though numbers in Asia and Africa are now uh, at a dramatic low, if we are able to, to focus our conservation, we can save the different species and we, we, we will be able to see vultures in these continents in a couple of decades in high numbers again. Um, that was my, uh, my talk. Uh, so thank you for your, uh, uh, for your attention. Uh, if you would like to have any more information, please visit our, our websites. We will have a new website in the coming uh, period. So uh, if you uh, at this point, visit our old website. Please go again uh, in a couple of weeks to our new website or follow our social media on Twitter or on an Insta, uh, an Instagram. Um, and together for vultures, we can save this, uh, uh, this species. Um, 
Mohit? Um, I think yes, I should stop uh, my presentation at this point. Yes, absolutely. So this was absolutely wonderful. And it was, um, it was a real eye opener. Uh, hence, it was so important to listen to you to understand uh, conservation success. Um, you know, there is still hope that, you know, we could do something with our vultures as well. And I think it's very important um, uh, to, to know the importance of vultures in, in uh, you know, in conservation, in ecology, and what important role they, do they play. I, I'd like people to ask questions to Hans if they've got any questions related to European vultures, right? So, so, uh, so uh, Hans will can can answer your questions related to uh, conservation of vultures in Europe. So, if you've got any questions, please go ahead and ask. There is one question which Augusto has asked um, Hans, which is, um, what about the problems of uh, declofenac uh, and European legislation about removing of dead animals from the countryside? Yeah. Um. I will answer this in, in, in two parts. First is, uh, is uh, veterinary diclofenac. Um, this, is, this is still a, a, a big threat to, uh, to European species uh, of vulture uh, uh, again. We have, uh, two weeks ago, we have uh, released a, a, a press uh, release uh, um, that we actually have the first proven case of a vulture that was killed by diclofenac in, uh, in, in Europe. Um, that means Diclofenac is still is still legal, and this is uh, uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, a big threat. Um, but this is uh, we have been trying to get it uh, forbidden for uh, quite a long time. Um, but this is now the smoking gun that we have the proof that actually diclofenac is also a problem in, in Europe. So we we have put a lot of pressure uh, uh, pressure on, on on governments to to actually start. Um, forbidding this uh, this drug, but is, it is still legal, and that that is still a big problem. Regarding the uh, the leaving of carcasses of, uh, of, of of livestock and of cattle in in the countryside, um, mainly in in Europe, uh, that is not allowed. Um, but there are specific areas where it is allowed, uh, and for instance, Spain, uh, France, uh, and or and areas of the Balkans. It is allowed there, um, uh, and and this this still proves a lot of uh, of, of, of a highly valuable uh, uh, food for uh, for for vultures. Uh, and, and one of the the, the issues is that uh, the, the food has to be clean, clean from mainly veterinary uh, drugs. And and, and um, so far, uh, this all goes well in the last couple of years. Excellent. So, uh, Judith is asking, what about wind farms? What about sky breeders? Um, you know, have you seen uh, any information of sky breeders? Are they a threat? I guess this is what she wants to ask. Um, the wind farms. Yeah. Wind farms are, are, are a threat, um, especially when placed in, uh, in specific locations. Um, uh, together with uh, with governments and and, um, uh, and and wind farms, we are trying to um, uh, create as safe as possible uh, uh, situations for uh, for vultures. There is now technology that uses radar to uh, uh, to detect vulture, vultures, groups of vultures, but also individual birds, which. Uh, um, makes the wind farm actually to stop when the when the when the vulture passes. This technology would be the, will be the future to save uh, uh, to save this species combining with the with, with, with the green energy that we uh, that we all need. Um, but but technology like this uh, is definitely necessary for uh, for vultures to to pass those wind farms safely. I think it'll be cutting edge technology. It'll be fantastic if that can happen because um, you know we we're going to face similar situation in parts of India where we have wind farms now and we also have high power lines passing through. So so we've got similar problems. And uh, Sham is asking uh, in one of your early slides 
that shows bleeding from egg stage itself. How can you avoid human imprinting on these chicks? Okay, when 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 the when the eggs hatch, um, um, uh, no, uh, bearded vultures lay mostly lay one or two eggs uh, every season. Um, we take away the eggs uh, and take them into a, an incubator to, to to increase the chances of it actually hatching, and we replace them with artificial uh, uh, eggs. When the eggs hatch in the incubator, um, we feed them manually for about one to two weeks. Um, we have we have learned in, 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 and got the experience that these two weeks, um, uh, human imprinting is not an issue. Uh, but after these two two weeks, um, the birds, the, the, the fledglings uh, return to, uh, to their parents, to their nests. Uh, so they're placed in a nest again and have the, the parents uh, adopt the, the, the young birds. Um, and from that point, when the birds, when the parents adopt it again, they will feed it until it's around 90 days old. Then we take it away by, uh, by their parents and, and, and bring it to, uh, to the release sites. Um, when the bearded vulture pair actually lays, lay two eggs, um, we breed them both, we hatch them both, but we can only repla replace uh, one chick into the nest. Uh, because one of the, uh, the issues that we have with bearded vultures is canism. Uh, that means that the older and bigger young will kill uh, its sibling. Uh, fortunately, there are also um, um, pairs of, of bearded vultures that, that are too old uh, to, to, uh, to lay eggs by themselves, but are highly experienced in raising young chicks. Um, and we have them adopt the second chick of the, of the, of the pair. Um, and then again, uh, the same procedure. They they raise the chick until it's old enough to uh, to be released. That's excellent, excellent. So uh, uh, Pranja uh, Prajna is asking, which is the uh, which country has the highest number of vultures in Europe? That definitely would be Spain. Uh, all uh, all four or five uh, species uh, uh, are there uh, in in huge numbers. And and for instance, and uh, if you want to go, I think Mohit can take you there. Uh, the Monfragüe National Park in, uh, uh, in in Spain. Um, you you can see huge clouds of vultures hanging um, uh, yes. uh, above the national park. Yes, if anybody is interested in traveling with me to Spain. I will be showing you vultures and I'll also take you to see the Iberian lynx. So we will be planning a trip if everything was okay. Um, you know, uh, all this, uh, the dark clouds go away. We will definitely be traveling in December and January back to Europe. Um, so, so thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Tamara has posted a link here uh, that, that for, um, you know, for Vulcan's detox um, life. And you could click that and you could make use of the information uh, to increase your knowledge. So friends, I would now uh, try and wind up. I want to uh, give a huge uh, round of applause and a big thank you to Hans and um, his organization for bringing this knowledge to all of us. I think it's, it's a lot of food for thought. Also, those who have missed this, you know, if your friends have missed this, uh, uh, this session, you will get the replay link tomorrow morning in your inbox. Feel free to share it with others so that other people can make use of this knowledge. Get in touch with his organization, Hans's organization, to understand better the kind of work he's doing and how we can adopt similar work in our own countries in Asia and take things forward. Um, the know-how is already there. They have success stories. They, are, uh, uh, they have done 30, 40 years of huge amount of work. Make use of it. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. So I think um, that was a beautiful uh, presentation, Hans. And I'm, I'm really, really honored. I'm really pleased. And I'm really pleased that all the ladies and gentlemen who are here to, to give respect to all your knowledge and all your time that you have spent um, you know, bringing this information to us. Thank you, Hans. And thank you, Mark, for me, making me meet Hans. 
Thank you, uh, Mark, Mohit, and, and all the attendees for your for, for this opportunity and um, uh, together for vultures. Great, thank you, and we see you in India soon. Hands once things are okay. More than happy to. I would like to see uh, a tiger. So um, let's go. Anytime. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night.